fish. I don't remember exactly when we started cooking fish. We started out doing one cookout per week, but the uh, senior high camp at that time was two weeks long. So, uh, so one cookout per you know for two weeks that wasn't too bad. And then somewhere along the line, Guy Hayes was the used to be the uh, chief physical officer at Henderson, and he said, "Well, I like to cook fish for you guys." And he had a nice cooker and everything, and so he did, and he did something that I thought was really interesting. He used a lot of black pepper, and I thought, well, gone. I like the taste of that, and uh, I used black pepper before that time, but not near that much. And um, so, guy cooked the fish, and after that, I told the boys, I said, now boys, we're gonna get these cookers. They were cast iron. I said, we're gonna clean these cookers up, best this man has ever seen. And that's what we did, and. Uh, Unknown to us, after you clean those things like that, you have to oil them up with oil or grease them with grease or something like that or they'll rust. And I found out, it was 10 years later, I found out that we ruined Guy Hayes' cookers. He just didn't, he, he didn't tell us about it because he knew we were trying to do him a favor, but I always felt kind of bad about that. Um, the cook, first fish cooker, I made myself. Another one I made myself, a guy came over to my house to tear out the heat, heating and cooling and they had these big old long burners that long and they shot a flame of air about that tall and uh, I said, what are you going to do with those? And he said, uh, I'm going to throw them away. I said, well, let me have them. So I took my trusty welding outfit and I welded those on there and I got oblong uh, cast iron pans and I'm made a windbreaker behind it and I already had a gas bottle and that's what we cooked fish on for at least five or six years and uh, oh I didn't tell you on the on the charcoal cooker earlier uh, when uh, David Rollins told uh, the controller over there the money man <laughs> he's almost had a heart attack he's a red-faced guy anyway Jim Dr. Ed, Jim Andrews and he's red-faced anyway and he just went you did you how much you and uh, David Rollins did some tall explaining on that and so then we came down to the fish cookers and I said David I can't use this cooker that I built anymore I said I got it held together with baling wire which I really literally did baling wire and chewing gum and uh, it's cooked its last and I said, I need to go by. He said, you're not going to do the same thing you did on the uh, charcoal cooker, are you? And I said, no, I won't do the same thing. <laughs> so I went down to Canton, Canton, Texas, the big flea market down there. And, and uh, so I looked for uh, cookers. And uh, I said, well, how much money can you, can you give me to do that? And he said, well, how much you need? And I said, well, can you spare 500 bucks? I said, I can get what I want for 500 bucks. And uh, David said, well, whew, yeah, I guess so. I'm going to have to convince some of Jim Andrews again. We'll be in trouble. But you go ahead. Do $500. I went to Canton, and the cooker, the actual fish cooker, were $250, $250. So I bought two of them. <laughs> and uh, David Rollins, he was, turned a little red over that, but he bought the two cookers. And man, what an easy job after that. And a lot of people have asked me about the fish. And um, there are just two things that you need to really remember about the fish. Farm-raised catfish can have a strong taste. It depends on the size of the, far, of the uh, um, pond that they're raised in and that sort of thing. They ha can have a strong kind of a muddy taste to them. And uh, the, ca the fish that I used to get from the cafeteria were real inconsistent. One time they'd be just great and the next time they would find them cheaper someplace <laughs> and they'd just be strong. So in order to level that out you soak the fish in you depending on what size fish you have a uh, container of water usually a couple of gallons and then about a half a cup of vinegar per gallon of water and then about a half a cup of salt 
in that and make sure the salt is already dissolved before you ever put the fish in there. And then the fish usually comes frozen. So what you want to do is take that frozen fish and put it in the water and let it soak in vinegar and salt water for uh, about five hours. And that does two things. It takes the strong taste away and makes even bad catfish taste good. And uh, it also uh, bleaches the meat white so that its presentation of it, it looks better uh, as well as tasting better. So after you do that for about five hours, then you spread the meat out in lines again. I'm a strong believer in putting things out in lines because if you don't, you miss stuff. And uh, so then I put black pepper on there. And uh, black pepper goes away when you cook it in hot peanut oil. So you're not going to get too much black pepper. And uh, you know, I've had people tell me uh, after I inspected the box and there was not one crumb left, not one crumb, <laughs> people were like, that fish a little bit too too black, too much black pepper. <laughs> Reminded me of an old aunt I used to have. She would eat the biggest plate of fish you ever saw. She was about 87 years old and uh, after she ate the big plate of fish, she would suck her teeth every time and say, little bit too salty. <laughs> so anyway, you're not going to get too much, T-O-O -O much black pepper. Just cover it. And then no salt. You've already done that in the salt and vinegar. No salt. Just black pepper. Flip them over. Do the same thing on the other side. And um, then you're ready to cook them. And uh, I use a formula of uh, three parts meat cornmeal and one part flour and then I do black pepper that too uh, to taste and then I also salt that a little bit to taste too because that's that's outside the fish so then you're you're ready to cook you got the fish battered you got it got pepper on it and uh, you've soaked it and uh, you want to drop it in the grease and you want the grease to be I don't know why there's argument on this, but you want a deep fryer to be deep enough in, in the grease and you want to always use peanut oil. I've used cottonseed oil and a, a Wesson oil, vegetable oil, and uh, it all tastes great, but the, the vegetable oil is burned. The peanut oil doesn't burn. You can get it really, really hot if you're going to cook french fries too, and really, really hot. Anyway, the, the grease needs to be deep enough that the fish can float that no fish touches the bottom and I don't ever put more fish in there I don't pile the fish on the I just put one layer so that when it gets done it can float 350 degrees and you have to have a thermometer I never cook without a thermometer and I actually prefer 375 so I start cooking the fish at 375 degrees and when it floats about three minutes later it's done and then just serve and enjoy. Uh, French fries, 400 degrees. And I like all these years of band camp, just a personal preference, I like the steak fries. They're a little bit thicker and you can crisp them up brown if you cook them at 400 degrees and goody.